Good evening, Feast Ortigas District. Welcome to the Late Night Snack. My name is Tin and I will be your guide tonight as we pray the exam. The exam is a 500-year-old prayer taught to us by St. Ignatius of Loyola. It is a meditative prayer which allows us to take a look at our day and reflect where Jesus was. It's a very good exercise and I encourage you to keep doing it every day. It will draw you nearer and closer and have a deeper relationship with our Lord. I believe that God honors your time tonight because you honor this date with him. It's Friday night and instead of, you know, having some social activities with with your friends or your family members, which is also good, but you chose to carve a special time with God tonight. And tonight we are going to have a reflective and meditative prayer. But before that, every Friday I introduce a word. And this week, there's one word that came up for me that's really valuable. I was talking to my friend who's a life coach. Her name is Kitty Ferreria. Hi, Kitty. Shout out to you. My good friend, Kitty, is a life coach and a career coach. And we were having this conversation this week. And it's a beautiful, enlightening conversation. And this word came up. The word is evolve. And I'd like to share that with you tonight as we pray. Perhaps we can we can make a, we can reflect on that word evolve. Uh, do you think that it it is time for you to evolve in a certain area of your life this 2021? Of course, 2020 was a totally totally um, what can I say? I can't even think of a word that would aptly describe 2020, but it was quite a you know, a one of a kind year for everyone. And I believe that uh, because of what happened in 2020, 2020, we're going to take some values in coming into this year. And I think that there is some sort of a transition in any area of our lives. And I think the word evolve is a very good word. It takes it into a positive spin. So I guess I'd like to share that with you. And as we pray tonight, I encourage you to bring that to God, bring to God whatever change it is that you'd like to see um, or reflect on in your life at this very moment. And so we begin our late night snack uh, with a reflection and a prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's start in a comfortable position. Allow yourself to be in a position of openness and take this time to be with God. Imagine that He's sitting right beside you as you reflect on your day and as you try to seek Him. Let's start with gratitude. Our first point is to always give thanks to God our Lord for the gifts that we receive. Saint Ignatius once said that the most abominable sin he could imagine was the sin of ingratitude. He knew that an awareness of God's goodness and generosity is the foundation of our relationship with God. And once we recognize God's goodness, we spontaneously feel gratitude. In this first point of our exam, we express gratitude for the experiences and encounters during the day that have been good or pleasant or meaningful, whether they seem small, trivial, or important. We also express gratitude for the larger gifts we have received. We express our thanks for our faith for this moment, our life, our talents and abilities, our significant relationships, whatever comes to mind, give thanks to our God. Express your gratitude and appreciation for His love, for His provision. And as our spiritual life deepens, we will notice that we will become more and more aware that all we have is a gift given to us far beyond anything we might expect or deserve. 
We might sometimes find ourselves in a mood of resentment. We might feel anxious. And we might have a challenge with trying to think of something that we are grateful for. Whenever we feel this, and if you feel this right now, more important for us to do is to express thanks to God. Not to pretend the feelings that we don't feel, but to acknowledge at whatever level we can the truth of God's goodness to us. The second point is to ask for the grace to know our sins and to root them out. St. Ignatius gives his second point a moralistic tone. The particular grace we are seeking here can be expressed more broadly as the light to see our life the way that God sees it without the illusions and deceptions that we commonly live by. If we are to ask for this grace wholeheartedly, it is important for us to know how desperately we are in need of it. Psychology has shown that many of our true feelings and motivations are genuinely hidden from us. The unconscious part of ourselves can have a powerful influence on what we feel and how we act. Even apart from this, there is a natural tendency to rationalize our actions and to believe the sort of front we put on for other people. We can deny or repress unpleasant or embarrassing things about ourselves. Or we can also have attitudes of self-deprecation or contempt that distort our view of ourselves and others. The possibilities for self-deception are endless. To truly know ourselves is not something that we are able to do alone. We need to ask the Holy Spirit for the light that can reveal us to ourselves. For this day, think about the things that you've done that made you feel disconnected with God. Perhaps you have committed a sin of omission wherein you had to say something but you chose to keep quiet. Or perhaps you lost your temper. Perhaps you also was not very careful with the words that you say that you ended up hurting someone. Whatever it is that made you feel a discomfort in your heart and made you feel that there was something wrong that you did and that you hurt someone, ask the Lord right now to show you that particular moment and ask God for forgiveness. The third point is to demand an account of our soul from the moment of rising to that of the present examination, hour by hour or period by period. The thoughts should be examined first, then the words, and finally the actions. Now at this particular moment, ask the Holy Spirit to show you how you dealt with your day period by period, when you woke up in the morning, how were you feeling, what did you do, onwards to noon time, or how you spent it in the morning, noon time, and then after lunch or in the afternoon. This is the heart of the exam, our actions, words, thoughts, feelings, can come from an internal source of freedom and openness to other people and God, or they can come from what St. Paul calls the flesh or the law of sin, that is to say from the self-centeredness that inhabits all of us. We examine the events of our day methodically in order to uncover the source and the direction of our life today. St. Ignatius suggests we move from thoughts to words to actions. However, it can be more fruitful to move the other way, to look at words and actions, and then reflect on the real motivations, intentions, and feelings that underlay them. 
actions that are apparently good can be done for bad motives, such as a desire for praise. Such an action might be considered praiseworthy, but really springs from self-centeredness. Now at this moment, I invite you to think of the moments of today and to think about certain actions that you've done, words that you've said, thoughts that you've thought. And think about your intention. Perhaps this is a moment where you will ask the Holy Spirit to bring you to a moment where you feel, where the Holy Spirit feels that you need a self-reflection. The examine of our day is not simply earnest introspection. It is prayer. We are going through our day with God, attentive to the inner feelings and desires, which is where we experience God's call in the midst of everyday activity. Whatever moment that comes up with you right now, present it to God. The fourth point is to ask pardon of God, our Lord, for our faults. We have reviewed our day, and we may have come to a sense of the dynamic of sin and grace that has been operating in our life for today. At this point, our response is awareness. And so far as we have discovered grace and freedom as we operate today, our response is gratitude and wonder for the work of God in our soul. Genuine freedom always comes as a surprise to us because it involves a sort of self-transcendence that we know we don't have in ourselves. When we discover that in our day, we need to praise God for it. At this moment, We present to God and we ask pardon for our faults. Lord, we lift up to you all the things that we've done today that wasn't aligned with the will that we took, things that we thought, things that we said, that is important. We thank you for shedding light to these things. We lift them up. We lift them up to you. We ask you for this. We ask for your pardon. this time, we resolve to amend with the help of God's grace. We end our examine by looking towards tomorrow with a desire and resolve to affect changes in our action and attitude that God has called us to do. In our spiritual life, we will deal with our day one day at a time, we will deal with our issues or concerns one day at a time. We are not going to look at changing our whole lives. We will simply look at what we want to change tomorrow. And we are going to ask God, God's help. Our lives are a drama of sin and grace. But this drama is being played out on the rather humble stage of our day-to-day -day life. St. Ignatius adds our need for God's grace, an important point. Right at this very moment, I encourage you to, to ask God for a special grace and, and ask God's grace for tomorrow as we face another day. God's grace is new every morning, and we remember that. We are not resolving to perfect ourselves by force of our own will, but we are resolving to open ourselves to grace through awareness of where we need it. At this time, let us pray. 
and requested. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inoculate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within thy wounds, hide me. Permit me not to be separated from thee. From the wicked foe, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to thee. That with the saints I may praise thee forever and ever. And as a man, we pray. O Lord's prayer. O Father, who art in heaven, who will be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hallelujah. We praise and thank you, Lord, for being with us. We thank you for our wonderful night with you. And I hope you had a great meditative prayer with God tonight. As always, uh, let me end with a prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Father God, I praise and thank you for each and every one of my brothers and sisters who are here with you tonight. Lord, we praise and thank you in advance for the grace that we've received and for the grace that we are about to receive, Lord Jesus. We know that all of our dreams, all of our concerns, our issues are in your hands. And if they are in your hands, we are okay. We are well. Thank you, Jesus. And we pray for a good night's sleep and a wonderful weekend with our loved ones. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God bless you, my dearest brothers and sisters, and see you here again next time at the Late Night Snack. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye.